Um, so, uh, just a last question, Professor Zai. Um, among the various things, as I said, you are the main organizer of the Brief Therapy Conference and the evolution of psychotherapy. That are two of the most um, important worldwide events in the field of psychotherapy. So, um, can you tell us what you think are some important uh, future trends and topics of interest and or challenges for the therapists in, in the future? Sure. Well, when we look back at the evolution of psychotherapy, which started in Europe, where the tradition was more conservative and the interest was why, why are people the way that they are? And after World War II, when you couldn't have psychotherapy, because in order to have psychotherapy, you have to have a, a culture that is not based in scarcity. If you're concerned with food and shelter, you're not going to be concerned about your neuroses. So as therapy developed more quickly in the United States after World War II with a more pragmatic American influence. It's not so important why, it's more important how and you had the development of behaviorism and you didn't need to understand why the person had the problem in order for the person to change. You could just use behavioral techniques and then you had the development of a humanistic approach to psychotherapy where you just appreciate and be with the person and establish an I-thou relationship. And then you had the um, development of cognitive behavioral uh, methods of psychotherapy and the development of systemic orientations to psychotherapy. Don't treat individuals, treat the system. Change can happen when you make an alteration in the system. And then to me, Erickson represented another stream, this experiential stream of psychotherapy. And now what is in vogue is affective neurobiology. And people like Ernest Rossi and uh, Daniel Siegel, uh, Daniel Amen have brought the brain into focus. And this is the decade, or could be the century of the brain, where we're all trying to understand um, how the organ that we treat, which is the brain, how does that organ operate? Mm -hmm. And uh, we've made marvelous strides in understanding. Now, when I started the Evolution Conference in 1985, it was like Star Wars. My theory, my technique is better than yours. And a lot of the people who I invited didn't know each other. In my suite in the faculty meeting prior to the conference, I watched a 78-year-old Joseph Wolpe walked over to 83-year-old Carl Rogers, and they said to each other, we've never met. So you had the titular leader of behavior therapy and the titular leader of humanistic therapy, and they never met. So my conferences have inched psychotherapy into the direction of technical integration. You can have whatever theory you want to have, and if that serves your purposes, great, but the techniques of doing therapy, um, we can integrate. And now in the evolution conferences, it's become much more of a collaborative approach. What are some of the commonalities that make therapy work? Oh, you're doing that on your side of the fence? I'm doing something similar on my side of the fence. So the evolution conferences, I hope, have taken uh, my field and moved it into uh, a different, and moved it into a more integrative approach. Now, in the United States, which is different from every other country, um, where, where psychotherapy is paid for by insurance, that doesn't happen in Italy. Mm -hmm. So there is a necessity for doing treatments that are empirically validated, which to me is a regressive movement in psychotherapy, not an advance, because then basically therapists become techni technicians just tell me right, the right technique and tell me the technique that's empirically validated and I'll do it. Now, people like Scott Miller, where you have feedback-informed therapy, yeah. so you use the empirical data, the feedback that you get from the client to calibrate and to target the therapy in a better way. And uh, that type of research, I think, uh, I hope, will come more to the forefront and uh, rather, uh, and uh, we, we won't be looking at effect sizes that are so small, but then taken as gospel 
uh, at, that this is the proper way to treat a social phobia. You use this protocol and that's all there is to it. And that ha- has become increasingly the case in the United States where psychotherapy is more insurance driven. So I'm hoping that right now I travel to more than 40 countries to lecture about psychotherapy. That might be the Guinness Book of Records. And, uh, um, you know, that that's uh, uh, a large portion of the number of countries on Earth. And all of the all of those countries are, are developed. I don't go to um, non-developed countries because psychotherapy um, uh, is not psychotherapists are not so predominant, nor do they make enough money to afford having lecturers come uh, from the United States. But I hope that psychotherapy, like Buddhism, will take on a cultural cast. Uh, a, a, a statue of a Thai Buddha looks Thai, a statue of a Japanese Buddha looks Japanese, and the, um, the cast that Buddhism took was different from Christianity, which was much more doctrinaire. This is the doctrine, but in places like Brazil, they're synchronistic, and they have found ways of incorporating, for example, African spiritism with uh, the Catholic culture. Um, So I'm hoping that um, as psychotherapy develops in other countries, uh, um, China is an example, uh, that it will have roots, it will have new perspectives that develop the field because Truthfully, I haven't heard so many new ideas in the last 30 years about psychotherapy. Um, uh, I think that the field had its expansion. It grew divergently very quickly in especially the 70s and the 1980s. And now it's kind of a a cooling and more of a search for commonalities. But um, I I, I hope that... There are people who bring new ideas and uh, new perspectives that are fundamental to psychotherapy. I'm not talking about working with advanced conditions that are rare, but new ideas that are really fundamental. And I hope that um, I can do that with some of my work and talk about some fundamental processes that can be used uh, no matter if the person is Um, a psychoanalyst or they're a behavior therapist or a systemic therapist that some of the perspectives that I talk about can be um, useful in no matter what the level of the therapist and no matter what the technique. The uh, books that I would like to mention is a, a trilogy I wrote the first book, Hypnotic Induction, which will be in Spanish, uh, in in Italian, it's already in Spanish. And uh, I wrote uh, another book on psychoaerobics, which is Exercises for Therapist Development. And then I wrote another book called Anatomy of an Intervention, which was published early this year. And that is my model of brief therapy. And then the next book will be on evocative approaches to psychotherapy. I hope that'll be out by the end of the year or perhaps by early next year. Um, and so uh, I'm trying to uh, make available things at the Erickson Foundation, where we also have the largest archive that you can imagine of uh, psychotherapy from vid- video recorded from 1984 to the present day. And now we're at a project of streaming videos. At the end of this year, we do the Brief Therapy Conference in San Francisco. Next year, we do the Erickson Congress in Phoenix. In 2020, we do the Evolution of Psychotherapy Conference again. So we have lots of things that are still developing, and people can go to erickson-foundation.org and learn. You can also, as you said, go to YouTube, and if you, you can find a lot of my lectures, and you can find the series Five Minute Tips for Therapists, we're in our second season, concluding our second season of the Five Minute Tips yeah. for Therapists. There's about 35 of them. Great. So thank you, Flavio. I thank you, really thank you. appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for the show. I, I really appreciate your time and yeah, and, your answers. And, uh, and yeah, and see you in December. You'll be presenting at the Brief Therapy Conference. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for giving that space. It will be a great honor. Thank you. That's, that's super. See you in December, and uh, I will see you in December.
for your books and maybe other events also in Italy. Okay, ciao, ciao. Ciao. Thank you. Thanks.